I don't think Bruce, he just doesn't care about surviving at all. He just wants to inflict pain, inflict like his kind of form of justice, which is kind of questionable justice. I always just get the impression that he just wants to keep recreating the night where his parents died. It's getting serious, Bruce. If I can't have an effect, I don't care what happens to me. You were only a boy, Bruce. I could see the fear in your eyes I didn't know how to help. Alfred's not really equipped emotionally to deal with suddenly having to raise a child. He tries to teach him how to be a man, and so he's sort of, sort of partly responsible for what Bruce Batman has become. And I got this from the comics. Alfred was the one who taught him how to defend himself. Alfred was the one who gave him these tools, and that came from him being able to fight as somebody who was former MI6. I could teach you how to fight, but I wasn't equipped to take care of you. You needed a father. And all you had was me. It didn't make its way into the script because it just didn't fit. But originally, part of their relationship was sparring. So that as they, you know, the idea was after he comes home, after a night of being out in the city, he and Alfred were meant to spar. And it didn't end up making its way through the draft. It just didn't work with the scenes that I had. Um, it didn't fit. But it is, in my mind, something that does happen. He's taught Bruce how to fight. And then Bruce has just kind of taken what was the only thing Alfred th thought he could teach him and just taken it to this extreme extent where now Alfred thinks he's going to die because of the only thing he thought was a good idea. I wanted Batman to be a really effective street fighter. And I wanted him to have a version of, of misc martial arts where he'd adapted various forms just out of efficiency in order to be able to survive on the streets. So we just basically overlap this whole motion here? Yeah. When I was looking for a stunt person, I met with Rob Alonzo, and he and I just really connected, and he was a fighter. My role in this film is making sure that that is not action for the sake of action, that it always drives the story forward. Yes, that's it. Seamless between dramatic dialogue sequences right into blended action. In describing Batman's fighting style in this iteration of Batman, this is a very in-your-face, brutal, realistic approach. When he does strike, he strikes out with a lot of power. When we brought in the fight guys, we made sure that they understand that the reactions that they were going to be given were just brutal. He's punishing them. <laughs> like, he's, like he's doing corporal punishment on everyone. He is judge, jury, and executioner. We've trained Rob in a way that he is always reacting to the performers around him as opposed to anticipating the movement. And it felt way closer to a real fight. You're really watching the person who you're fighting with rather than thinking, OK, I memorized it like a dance. You're like, wow, that's Rob Pattinson doing his own stunt fight there, hitting that guy two extra times. That guy is scary. That's Batman. But it's also Batman's arc is he represents justice for us. He's got to learn that. And beyond justice, as Matt wrote, he's got to become something more. His arc was he had to find what that more was has to provide hope to the city. Gotham is in a world of hopelessness. Give me the money! When you're in that world, you're gonna fight as hard as you can. I gotta do this my way. I tried to find a way to come up with signature moments for the fights so that they were emblematic of who this iteration of Batman was. He doesn't have a total technical precision. He's fighting like a street fighter, but a street fighter who knows what he's doing. You can see that he's cobbled together a fighting style, and it feels really like this guy who is looking for vengeance. They think I'm hiding in the shadows. But I am the shadows.